This is not going to be a conventional YouTube video because I'm going to open it up with a very unconventional way. And I'm going to say right out the bat that I'm pretty pissed off. And whenever I'm pissed, I get extremely productive. I don't know if this works for you guys, but there's something powerful about being angry that just motivates me. And this is actually a rather petty thing, but the Miami Heat in the NBA just lost one of the most ridiculous basketball games that I've seen in my life in such a while. And I'm spending time on a channel where the majority of people could care less about basketball, even though I actually know basketball more than I know Dragon Ball. But I am wasting your valuable time just to give you a little bit of a rant as to how much this actually pissed me off. And don't worry, we're going to get into Dragon Ball, but just allow me to rant to the masses. So... What had happened was, is that the Miami Heat were beating the Chicago Bulls 22-1 to in the first quarter. It looked like this game was going to be 50-10 to by halftime, or probably even worse. And somehow, someway, we end up losing this game. Now, granted, I mean, obviously 22-1 to is ridiculous, especially at the beginning of the game. The teams are going to adjust and everything. But for us to lose like that, I haven't seen the Heat lose a game like this in quite some time. And I'm talking about in all of the years of my life to lose 22 to 1. I mean, t there's something about 22 to 1 that feels different. You know, like if you're beating somebody like 20 to 5 or something or like 25 to 10, that's a little bit different. But 22 to 1 just gives this different vibe that you scored 22 points and your opponent scored 1. And the fact that it's 1 point means it obviously has to be a free throw because... All of your field goals have to count for two or three points. So, all of this is basically just to also give a little bit of an insider to my Discord friends because they have been trolling me for the last 20 to 30 minutes about this and I kind of made this intro in the beginning of this video kind of to address them too. I apologize, I'm not trying to be selfish, but I just needed to get these thoughts out and for the 2% of you that give a rat's buttocks about basketball. I just wanted to let you know how you, I feel for the first two minutes and 30 seconds of this video. Now, that that's out of the way, I appreciate you guys for actually listening. And we are going to get straight to the show about Dragon Ball because, I mean, of course, this is what you guys pay me to talk about, right? So, what am I going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about the fact that it's also kind of hilarious that when you think about this Dragon Ball Super Superhero manga, guys. It's been almost a year where, you know, we were getting that whole Goten and Trunks filler manga arc stuff going on. And then you would never believe this. We went through that little filler arc, and then we literally went through the entire Dragon Ball Super Superhero arc in manga form. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. This feels very similar to something that happened... You know, when Dragon Ball Super was on the air and Resurrection of F, you know, and the Battle of God's Ark were going on. And it's one of those things where it's like, when you just produce something that we've already know exactly what's going to happen, it kind of just takes the life out of you. And the difference is, is that when you see it in anime format, because obviously, I mean, if you watch anime, this happens all the time. Usually the manga comes out first and then the anime ad adapts it. But the difference is, is that... Seeing it live, animated, and also seeing, you know, the characters, you know, and also what changes are going to take place, because usually, even if the changes are minor, there's usually going to be differences in the anime versus the manga, so there's always kind of that anticipation of how is this going to be adapted. It's the same thing when it comes to books. It's the same thing that when it comes to screenplays. It's always interesting to see how something that was written down or drawn will be like with live animation. But with Dragon Ball Super specifically, and Super Superhero, which still sounds so redundant, like saying that twice. It's just different because the Dragon Ball Super manga originally came out after the Dragon Ball Super anime, but because the anime is on hiatus, the manga has gone past the anime, so the manga is all we have for the time being. Which is interesting when you consider the fact that it's now like traditional... But even though it's traditional, it's going into an arc that we already know is going to happen because the movie came out first. Dragon Ball is in a weird space right now, guys. Just think about what I literally just said. Just think about where we are. 
We are watching and we literally just spent an entire year or close to a year reading this manga about something that we already saw in a movie over a year ago too. So in total time, even though it literally doesn't feel like it, but in terms of like total time of all the time it took to create this movie was about a year and then all of the time it took for all of these manga chapters to come out that was about a year we've literally spent two bleeping years on dragon ball super superhero and i feel like for dragon ball fans this is quite a bummer because we didn't want this because the movie in itself is good don't get me wrong i think superhero i'm not gonna say super super twice like i refuse even though I technically just did. But my point is, is that with all of this said, guys, I honestly feel like we've just spent so much time on this. And I feel like there's a great feeling of relief after this arc. I feel like the community just has this huge sigh of relief. But the honest truth about it is we have this huge sigh of relief in going back to an arc where we're assuming after this point. We're going to go to Black Frieza, and this is only going to be the, let's say, the fourth time that Frieza's really controlled Dragon Ball. I mean, technically five if you're counting, like, movies like Cooler's Revenge, which is basically a Frieza movie with a reskinned looking character and calling him Cooler, because, I mean, that's pretty much exactly what it is. But, you know, you have the original Namek arc, and then you have the Trunks arc. And then I guess technically in Fusion Reborn, he was briefly there and also briefly in GT. It's just like, you know, we're go we, we spent two years on this arc just to go back to a villain that we've already seen resurface himself in Dragon Ball so many times. And that's one of the weird things about Frieza, guys. Like, the weird thing about Frieza is that he kind of just exists in Dragon Ball. And Dragon Ball Super kind of created this weird dynamic with him after the Tournament of Power where... He was brought back to life because he helped Universe 7, you know, fight against the Pride Troopers and Universe 7 was victorious, so he was rewarded with a new life, so he just kind of exists in the universe now and Goku and Vegeta are aware that he's out there doing Frieza things, but they just don't care. He's just doing his own thing and he's still running his own empire. He came to Earth with evil intent, but they still didn't kill him when they were Gogeta. And they, and they just allowed him to leave and continue his own ways. And he comes back as Black Frieza. He's back and blacker than ever. And he easily, like, one-shots the two main villains of the arc without even trying. And he easily one-shots Goku and Vegeta, who just achieved two new forms. So it's just kind of one of those things where it's like, well, at least Frieza is so strong now that we have this to care about. But I'm not going to lie to you guys. I... I love Dragon Ball, and I've been having a blast creating YouTube videos over the last few months, you know, just resurfacing and coming up with all these new topics. But in terms of where the show is right now, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not trying to be a pessimist, but man, I feel like we have been drawn out. But the good news is, even though, like, this has been so drawn out, I feel like we're moving into a new space. And once this Black Frieza arc, and remember guys, we're assuming this is going to be the next arc. Once this concludes, hopefully there's even newer stuff that we can explore and go into that's even more original than this. Now, the interesting thing, too, that a lot of people have always been bringing up, too, is... Is Dragon Ball Daima going to be turned into a manga arc? And I feel like that's the last question we should discuss in this video, because... I don't think so, because Daima's its own thing, but I guess the question is... Will what we see with the super manga kind of transform into Diamond like a new timeline or something like that? And to be honest with you guys, that's a very good question. And if I'm brutally honest with you, I have no idea because the problem is we don't know what time period Daima is. Like, if, if I at least knew what time period Daima is, I feel like I could make a better educated guess on this. But because we're literally throwing the darts as to what time period Daima is supposed to take place in... It could literally be any time, which is why some people were talking about Master Roshi's perverted training, but we don't know where this time period is supposed to take place. So, as a result of it, this could be another thing too, kind of similar to GT or, and Dragon Ball Super technically, where it's just disconnected from the previous show, but we just kind of wink it into existence. So ultimately, guys, it would be really weird if Daima got its own manga... You know, like, if there was a manga adaptation that eventually leaked into it. Because, I mean, we have so much time 
like literally a year before Diamond comes out, that there's really no telling if there could be changes that are made about this. But at this current point in time, I doubt it. And I also appreciate you guys for listening to two minutes and 30 seconds of me talk about basketball on a channel where most people could care less. But I forced you to care by including it in the first two minutes and 30 seconds.